Hi, I'm Joey from the Google Web Designer team, and I'm here to talk about ruler guides. So the first thing about ruler guides is that you need to have rulers enabled to use them. So rulers are enabled up by default. You can see them at the top and left of the document. If you happen to have yours disabled, go into the view menu and make sure that this rulers item is checked. And with rulers enabled, you can create ruler guides by simply clicking the ruler and dragging the guide into the stage. Once on the stage, you can reposition a ruler guide by hovering over it. You see the cursor will update to the reposition icon, and then you can drag the ruler guide to a new location. Um, in order to reposition a ruler guide, you do need to have the selection tool enabled. So if we were to switch to say the tag tool, you notice that upon hovering over the guide, we don't get the reposition cursor. So switching back to the selection tool, let's add some guides to this document. You can hold the shift key to snap the guide to the nearest tick mark over here. So 20, 30, why don't we place this one at 20? And we'll also add vertical ruler guides at positions 50 and 250. You can delete ruler guides by clicking and dragging them to the side. So if we want to delete this vertical guide, we simply click and drag it outside the stage. Let's do the same for this horizontal guide. All ruler guide operations can be undone and redone. So if we go to edit, undo, edit, undo, we can undo those two deletions. Once you have the guides in the desired positions, you can lock them in place by going to view, guides, lock guides. Now, even with the selection tool enabled, hovering over the guides, it does not show the reposition icon, and we don't need to worry about accidentally interacting with the guides. Let's add an element to our document. So we're adding an image tag. Notice that as the cursor approaches the ruler guide, it snaps to it. Similar behavior occurs if you're using the selection tool and moving an element, it will snap to either guide if it becomes close to it, and similarly it will snap to their intersection. The same thing goes if you are resizing an element, notice it snaps to the guide. If you'd like to disable this behavior, you can go to View, Snap To, and Disable Guide Snapping. Now if I want to make it slightly wider than the guide, notice it is not snapping. But for this example, I would actually like it to snap precisely to the guide. If you do not want to see the guides in your document, you can toggle their visibility by going to View, Guides, Show Guides, similarly. You can turn it back on, view guides, show guides. If you want to delete all of the guides in your document at once, you can do that in the exact same place, view guides, clear guides. In this case, we actually want the guides back, so we will go to edit, undo, and you should know that ruler guides are saved with the document. So if you do save and close, reopen the document, your ruler guides will still be there but they are design aids visible at author time only, so they will not be included in your final published document. Finally, if you don't like this blue color that is the default for ruler guides, you can change that by going to Edit, Preferences, Design View. You might need to scroll down to see it, but this item here, the guides color, you can set it to whatever you'd like, so let's go with the red. Click Save and we have these now beautiful red ruler guides. And that's it. Thank you for listening to my intro on ruler guides and Google Web Designer. Thanks for watching, have a good day.